Hey guys! Thanks for coming back to Book Connection. I am Miss Michaela from the Downtown Huntsville Public Library and this is Misty also from the Downtown Huntsville Public Library. And for our Book Connection talk today where we talk about adult books and kids books on the same topic, we are going to be discussing LGBTQIA books because October is LGBTQIA, mm, so many letters, History <laughs> Month. So, Misty, as our guest and bringer of the adult books, would you like to start us off? Sure, thank you. So this book is We Are Everywhere by Matthew Reamer and Leighton Brown, and it talks about queer history starting from the 1910s up to 2017. There's tons of photos in this book, so if you wanted to share with your children, you could look at the photos. It's very dense. There's tons of words, as you can see, and tons of photos, but lots of words too. Uh, I didn't get to finish this before we came in, but I did look at all the photos and read all the captions, and it is well worth a look at. Another book that I read was The Book of Pride by Mason Funk. I listened to it on Hoopla. Um, I got the book so I could look at all the photos after each interview. So there's little snippets and little photos, and each interview is about a page, a page and a half. Um, this one doesn't talk specifically about Stonewall like this one does or this book, but it talks, it's interviews with each person and it talks about the importance of recording history and talking to our LGBTQ plus elders. Um, and it's each person has done something in their community and how they've changed their community, whether locally, regionally, or nationally. And it's just a really good look interview book and I, I would highly recommend it. Another book is Stonewall by Matthew Duberman. It was first published in 1994 which is the 25th anniversary of Stonewall. Uh, it was republished in 2019 which was the 50th anniversary of Stonewall. Um, it's really well researched. It goes, um, it follows six people uh, from their childhood up to the Stonewall riots and then goes um, past the Stonewall ride up to the first Pride March. And then I think in 2019 he re-interviewed some of the people and like updated some of the information. So most of the people he interviewed have passed away at this point. Um, it's good. It's a little a little scholarly, but it's still a good read. But it has pictures, right? No, it doesn't. I mean, there's a little bit of pictures okay. like here of the of the Pride parades and some of the the marches. I'm far more willing to read scholarly if there's a guarantee of pictures. <laughs> Just a little bit of pictures, not a lot. It makes it better. <laughs> it does. Um, Queer and Trans Artist of Color by Naya King. This is a, a podcast, so this is a transcript of the entire podcast. Um, there are actually three volumes of this book. We only have the first volume, unfortunately. It was a little hard for me to read because I feel like transcripts are a little um, dry, but there's just a wealth of information and they talk about artists and how that's such a broad definition because she interviews writers, poets, visual artists, singers, drag queens, burlesque performers, and it touches on various topics like gentrification, intellectual hazing, privilege, and disabilities. And, but um, I did look at the podcast. It's free on Stitcher and I think Apple Apple Pod or whatever it is. Um, but you can also pay for it on Patreon and become a supporter of her work, which I would highly recommend. I've never actually listened to a podcast. <laughs> but, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. The confessions I make on the show. <laughs> but I, I think I would have to listen to that rather than read transcripts because I agree with you. They're very hard. It's like reading a play. It is, me, and so. it's hard. It was, it was kind of hard for me to get through, but I, I really enjoyed it, the topics they discussed. And... Um, like I said, it's, all the transcripts are free online. The, the podcast is free, but you can also be a supporter and get, like, premium content. Um, the last book I'll talk about is Born This Way. Um, there are cute photos, so I would definitely share this with a child if I, if I had a children. And, um, if you're, and it just talks about being gay and coming out of the closet. And National Coming Out Day is actually uh, Sunday, October the 11th. 
So this is a good time to look at this and kind of share these stories and these photos. And they're really short. They're maybe a paragraph or so. But there are some cute photos. One of them was in a bunny suit. I was going to see if I could find that one. But I don't know where it is off the top of my head. But here's one. She's in a space suit. She wanted to be an astronaut. And it talks about how um, she was determined to be become one after after watching the um, space first space exploration. That's weird. What's so sweet? Well, okay. So I I will present mine. Okay. Um, my first book is also called Stonewall. Um, it's written by Rob Sanders. And I enjoyed it because it's kind of written in sort of picture book style. So you can see there's not a whole lot of script on each page. So this is appropriate for probably like a kindergarten age kid to read to them and maybe on up to like first or second grade. But what I really liked about it is it tells the story of Stonewall from the building's perspective. And it starts from its first use as two separate stables, like two-story stables, um, that were built in the 1840s. Um, it goes into how it was turned into Bonnie's Stonewall Restaurant, and then later turned into an inn, and then in the 1950s or 60s, it was adopted still as a Stonewall Inn, but um, it was a gay meetup. They didn't even have, like, running water, apparently. That was interesting to read about, um, but it was a safe space for them aside from when the cops showed up. And that led to the riots when they finally decided that they had had enough and they were standing up for themselves. So this is a good way to introduce kids to the idea of activism um, and also, you know, taking note of when they see oppression. Um, I really enjoyed also the fact that it has an interview in the back from somebody that was actually present during the riots and what led up to it. So I highly recommend. My next book is the first big head book that I had ever read. It's a very popular series in our in our area downstairs, <laughs> and I, I kind of feel bad that I slept on it for so long because this was this was well written. I enjoyed it. Um, this book in particular is Who Was Harvey Milk? Um, it tells the story of Harvey Milk, starting from when his grandfather first came from Lithuania. And it goes into how he remained closeted for so long. Um, I don't think he ever officially came out to his family. Um, they eventually learned because he ran as one of the first, well, was he the first man to run publicly as gay? I think he was. Um, but he ran for office in San Francisco. He lost consecutively for a long time, but then when he eventually did run, he always made sure to support other causes outside of just um, gay rights. He was an ally for black rights and for the people that are just in need and underserved. So he was looking out for everyone, and that's what I really enjoyed about this book. So I think I'll read more from the series while I'm at it. My next book is from our young adult section. It is called Queer There and Everywhere, 23 People Who Changed the World by Sarah Prager. This book actually starts from like the year 200 through these, oh, I'm going to cheat and look, 203 BC, oh, I was right, with Elagabalus. He was a teenage Roman emperor. And it ends with George Takei, who is still around. But my favorite part of this book, or my favorite little section, covered Juana Inez de la Cruz. She was a Mexican nun in the oh, 17th century. Sorry, And she actually fell in love with the Viceroy's wife. Um, she wrote several love poems about her and exchanged letters with her, but never got in trouble. She was very well known for her intellect, in addition to being pretty openly gay. Um, she also fought pretty hard for women's rights. She felt it was very important for women and young girls to be able to be educated, and she wrote on it frequently. Um, a lot of people had beef with her for that. But 
I recommend reading this book as a whole because all of these people are very interesting. My last book and my favorite is The Art of Drag. The contributors are Jake Hall, Sophie Birkin, Helen Lee, Jastrat Singh Hans, and I just love this book. It's so colorful. Uh, <laughs> it is. Also, I ordered it. It's from our young adult graphic section. Just look. This is what you see when you first open it up. It's gorgeous. This is spawn broken? Hmm? Is this spine broken? Oh, no. So this is an artist book or an art book. So the spine is just a little bit different. So oh, okay. it was intentionally not glued in all the way. I thought it was broken when we first got in. I was ready to complain to our yeah. vendor. But then it was pointed out to me that that was on purpose. Oh, I, okay. It was the first time I'd ever seen a book found like that. I'm yeah. not, I'm not, I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was perplexed. But this book goes throughout history as well. And I'm just going to keep flipping through it because, again, all the pages are so beautiful. But it talks about how drag was used in performance um, throughout history. It talks about... The different instances where people just did cross-dressing throughout their real lives, inspiration that they had from different communities, and how they pulled from just all kinds of inspiration. But I have this page marked because this is in their section entitled The Art of War, where they talk about how they fought how the LGBTQ community fought for their rights. And the very first act of war that it mentions is the Cooper's Donuts Riot. I enjoyed this because it was another one of those instances where it wasn't like a planned, um, it wasn't planned at all what they were going to do. Um, but the people that were going to Cooper's Donuts in Los Angeles uh, in an area that was referred to as the Gay Ghetto also interesting to read about, um, were constantly being hassled by the cops until one day when the cops showed up to arrest five different people or attempted to arrest five different people. They decided they weren't going to take it anymore and proceeded to pelt the police with donuts and coffee. That was just, it touched my heart. It really did to read that. Um, but I recommend this whole book because, again, it's beautiful to look at. It's interesting to read. Um, it is in our YA section, but honestly, I kind of re I would recommend it for younger and older. So I hope that you enjoyed this book talk, and I hope you'll check out these books. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to say? No, I'm, I'm not. That's it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope we'll see you next time. Please remember to like and subscribe. Bye. Bye.